Good morning, everybody. This is Terry over here at Hidden Hollow Loft. Um, today's project is going to be making a wooden cross plaque made from pallet boards. First thing you need is enough pallet boards to equal 24 in length, 16 tall. In other words, 24 by 16. As you see, all my boards here are cut 24. I'm trying to make enough to make two at a time today because I have a few orders. Anyway, all I've done is ripped the pallets down, taken the boards, squaring the ends, and making them 24 inches long. Stay tuned and we'll get started. Even though I like to sand my wood, I will say you should judge your pallet wood by its character like you would most people. Um, you see all the saw marks. The rip marks, you see the bad spot there, knot holes, all that other stuff. Oh, that's character. That's why you want this stuff, right? I mean, if you didn't want a nice pallet design with some rustic wood, you'd go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and buy one of their mass-produced pieces of art, you can call it, and that's what you would get. As you see here, I have about 40 inches wide this way, and I need two 24s, I mean, uh, two, I need 32 inches to make two, and that's what I've got. They're all cut down to 24 inches. Um, I'm going to show you what I do, because my cross is not, is not these sizes here. What I usually do is I'll take a three and a half inch piece, this will be my top and it will be my bottom, but mostly everything else has to be ripped down to size. And I'm going to pull out my example, and I'll show it to you. This is my board. As you can see, basically what I've done is uh, drawn two crosses. Because sometimes you want the cross to be on the right-hand side with the Bible verse on the left-hand side. Or you want the cross to be on the left-hand side with the Bible verse on the right-hand side. Either way, it's all personal preference. I could care less myself. What I got here is the board. Um... It's longer than 24, but that's okay because my signs are going to be 24. They're actually going to be more like 26 or so when I stagger the boards, and I'll show you how I do that. Basically, you want to draw a cross. As you see, I have this cross here and this cross here. If this helps you at all, from the top of my cross to the top of my design, my board, will be 3 inches. Then from the top of the cross to the top of the part of the cross that goes across this way is 2.5 inches. Now, this part of the cross is inch and a half. The rest of the way down. Um, I believe it's six inches. Let's see. Yes, yeah, six inches. Give or take a hair. Six inches. So what I like to do is I'll rip a board down that's not as not six inches long I maybe make one four make one two put a two inch up here the four inch down here and on this side I'll put the four inch up here and the two inch down here and down here the bobs another three inches you get it so far this is pretty simple hang on so the first thing I'm gonna do is take my Harbor Freight table saw works just fine for me I'm going to rip the board down for the top and one for the bottom. Like I said, these are three inches. The basic piece of pallet board is usually three to three and a half inches. I'm not making it easy. Basically three to three and a half inches or so. So I need three inches. So I'm going to rip down two of those. It's kind of hard to do these without. I mean, you could do it with a skill saw if you, you know, can hold onto the boards just fine. But table saw is really the way to go. Now, if you get the gist of it, you see that now I have a board at the top of the cross and one at the bottom of the cross, lined up. You know, these are sitting here now, but I will stagger them back and forth a little bit, and that's pretty much what I got now. But now I have this board right here, which I believe is two and a half. So I'm going to rip down one for two and a half, because it'll go here, and it'll go on this side. So let's get at that. 
Okay, there's your two and a half right there. Now what I'll do is when I'll cut this over here, I'll use this piece, this cut off, to run across this piece here. Now this piece right here is inch and a half, so I'm gonna have to rip one down inch and a half. Now here's my inch and a half. Same deal. I'll take it from here, I'll take it back here where I want to cut it from, and I'll take what's left over and put it on this side. So now, well, so we have six inches here. So what I want to do to make it a little, shake it up a little bit, is I'll rip them down in two different sizes to equal six inches, and I'll stagger them back and forth. It just gives it a little bit of a appeal. So hang on, and we'll get that done. In all reality, <clears throat> That's uh that's that's most of it except for like I said cutting some of them down to go over here on this side and then like as you see when I say stagger I mean like one will be that way one will be here one will be there um like that you don't want the edges flush with each other you know something like that so I'll design how I want it then I'll mark at the edge of the cross where I want that and cut the difference um. Like I said, this was three inches, this was two and a half inches, this was inch and a half, this right here was three and a half, and it was two and a half more right here, I mean two inches more here, so it was really more like five and a half inches instead of six, but, and then the bottom board right here is three inches, so let's get started. So this is basically how I'll stagger it, just like that. So what I'll do now, is as you can see, First thing I'll do since I got this marked is I'll come here with my pencil and I'll mark here and I'll mark here. That's where I know to cut that section out. That way I know that this will be here. That'll be just where I want it to be and vice versa with this piece. You, know, you cut where the edge of the cross is because this will be coming across here and meet and button up to the end of the cross. And then whatever's left over. I like to mark left and right on the front because I'm forgetful. And I'll do the same thing here and here with the cross. This is the bottom of the cross, so wherever I put this is where it stays. So I'll show you how I'm doing that real quick. Like I said, um, as you see it, you can see the line for the cross. So here's, here's a mark, and here's a mark. It doesn't really matter. As long as when you're done cutting, all you got to do is butt it up to it. So if you're a little off here and there, it really doesn't matter. Do this here and here. And I'll just put right, right left left get that one out of the way same with this one mark it here mark it here right left because i already had a stagger do i want so these once i move them out of the way they're just fun same with this one here and here oh it might be a little tough let's move it over just a hair get away from that nail because i'm leaving the nail heads And that one stays the same. So let's get these cut and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And ta-da. As you see, my cross is cut out. Isn't that pretty? I got the edges staggered. I will have to say one thing I forgot to tell you. Is that when you do this section right here, the inch and a half, you will have to make adjustments on the end because everything's 24 inches except for this, the distance between here and there. You have to allow for that. Like I said, I had to cut off some on both ends to get it to be, you know, proper. Otherwise, it was sticking over this far and sticking over that far, and that was just not good. But as you see, what I like to say is like right here, the five and a half inches is I take this board here, three and a half, and then two inch, and I stagger them. You know, big one on top here, little one here, little one up here, and a big one down here. And that's basically how you build these things. Um, what I'll do is sand it down real good and try to get all the stains out of it. I have maybe five orders for these right now. I'm trying to knock a couple out this morning before I start on my other projects that I have. Approximately 15 orders for, for my stove covers. They have really turned into something. Um, but this is a nice, easy project. Like I said, I'm going to stain it. We're going to put a Bible verse on it. I'm going to polyurethane over top of it. It's going to be real pretty. So since this is the front, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the whole thing over and line it up just the way it is, and I'm going to make some slats out of this. I'll probably rip that in half, 
I'll probably have three pieces and I'll go from like half an inch from the top, half an inch from the bottom. And I'll screw that into the back. I like to do it like right in here somewhere where it kind of keeps these boards from wiggling too much. I'll put one right here the same way and I'll put one on the end. And then I'll attach a wire between the two. And if you wait a minute, we'll get to that next. All right, now that all the front sides sanded real well, <clears throat> like I said, I flipped it all over so you're looking at the back side now, which is smooth. This is not going to be stained. Um, it's just a, a lot of extra work for something you're not going to be able to see. But if you line up all the lines on the cross, as you see right here, if you just pull back, you see a really nice, pretty cross. Like what I said, I'm going to take a few boards, I'm going to rip them down now, and then I'm going to show you what I do after that. So there, I took some of these slats that I had left over, ripped them down to one inch. What I'm going to do, like I said, I'm going to cut them a half inch from the top, half inch from the bottom. Something like that. And I'll come in here with my countersink. And I'll drill holes. And I'll run one inch coarse drywall screws in through the back. One, two, three. A couple of these are left over. They're going to be for my next one. I'm building two of these today. As an example. And my German Shepherds are over there barking. See, I got three slats. One near the end over here. One near the end over here. And one run right alongside the edge of the cross. You don't want to get too close to the edges because you don't want to split the wood. So now I've got my countersink. See my countersink? I'm going to countersink. I'm not really going to countersink as much, um, but I am going to pre drill the holes just to keep the wood from splitting. Um, I don't care if the screw sticks out a little out of the back, it's not really going to matter. I'm afraid that if I countersink on some of the boards that aren't you know, really thick, that I'll come out the other side and I don't want that either. So let me get started on this and I'll show you how it turns out. And there it is. Isn't that pretty? You see through all the way to the, through the cross. There's your cross. Now you think with the vinyl or you can stencil a Bible verse over here. We do it both ways. Um, I do make these. I do ship. I'm on Etsy under Terry's Creations if you ever want to look me up and see the things I build. Anything that I build, I will ship to you. Um, it sucks that shipping is so expensive nowadays, but it is what it is. But you're going to get something that I care about, something I made by hand. And I'm really anal about my work. Um, I want it to be right, as right as I can get it. So there you got that. I'll flip it over. And as you can see, I put a little piece up here. Sometimes when the boards, you know, because you're on the edge here and you got these boards hanging over, they don't want to line up a little bit. They want to wiggle. That is not no big deal. Another little piece of wood, a couple screws. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift this screw up here and lift this screw up here. And I'm going to go get me some wire. All you need is some regular picture hanger wire. You wrap it around there real good. You run it over here to where it won't be shown and run it to this one. Wrapped around there real good and sink the screws back in. After that, you're pretty much finished. Um, anyway, however you choose to hang it, the wire is the best because you don't have to worry about lining up with studs, 16 inches, 16 inches. Everybody's stuff is different. It's a one size fits all. I will notice, or will explain, you notice right here, there's a couple little places. When you use thinner wood like I did here, I didn't use the real thick pallet wood for this project. And when you sink the nails, sometimes the nails will come, or the screws will come through. So what I usually do is I take my file right here, and I'll file them down to where they're not hurting you. Can't hurt you. They don't show anymore. So the next thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to stain it. I'm going to let my wife put a Bible verse on it, or whatever you want put on it. It can be there. Obviously, it should be a Bible verse. I mean, it's a Bible. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video on how to make these things. If you have any questions, just ask me. Any suggestions, there you go. Um, my daughter had sent me this picture and asked me, or told me, that she bets that I could make one. And I didn't sleep the night before, or that night, that I built one, um, thinking about how to do this. And my, like I said, the best way I could figure it out, get a piece of wood and a piece of plywood, about the size you want to do it on and <clears throat> make a cross and then all you got to do is work around it you know um, rip the pieces down to fit everything you need 
a lot of these projects I'm showing you are really simple. Um, like I said, I'm no expert, but I get better every day. And I've got me a planer now, and I've got a bunch of reclaimed, it's not even reclaimed, it's just old sawmill lumber that I've got out there. And as soon as I can get my Christmas projects done, I must have another 15 table covers or stove covers to do. Then I'm going to start working on some other projects, and I'll show you how to do some really neat stuff. I do vegetable bins. I do flight boxes for pigeons. As you can see on my last one, sky is the limit. Anyway, this is Terry. This is a quick and easy pallet project, something you might want to do. Y'all have a wonderful day.